I got to spend some time last night with the Monster Hunter Wilds closed beta or open beta or whatever they want to call it. It's the PlayStation first kind of look at the game. And I got a lot to say about it. Uh, that's what this video is going to be dedicated to. There's going to be timestamps below if you want to jump to specific sections of my early impressions. Keep in mind, this is a beta. Things will change. Things will get better. Things may get worse. This is just our first look at this. Although, you got to believe this far into development, major systems of the game most likely will not be massively overhauled. I really like Monster Hunter World, but I really fell in love with Monster Hunter Rise. I spent over 100 hours playing that game, and then I spent another 100 hours working my way through the Sunbreak DLC. I had it on PC, and that was during a time when my stepmother was going through cancer, and my wife and I went down to spend time with my father-in-law. And um, it was a kind of a bittersweet time, obviously. But I will tell you that I would look forward to going home at night and just getting lost in Monster Hunter for a couple hours. And we did this for a while, definitely over a month. That's when I really racked up all that time for the game and I really grew a sense of appreciation and fondness to it. And maybe I have more of an emotional connection to it than others because of that time. But I felt like Monster Hunter Rise really got me through some tough times. So when I saw that Monster Hunter Worlds was coming, I absolutely lost my mind. It is by far easily my most anticipated game of 2025. I'm gonna break this video down into a few sections and I wanna first wanna talk about what I call the game setup. This is before you even actually step one foot into the world. There are a slew of options. And I mean pages and pages and pages of options to go through. And I really appreciate this. It's the very first thing the game will show you. You have your standard, do you want HDR on or you want HDR off? How bright do you want the screen to be? That sort of thing. But you have your speaker types and settings, whether you're using a sound bar or stereo speakers or surround sound or headphones. There was like seven different options for what kind of sound profile you wanted. Lots of accessibility options. I mean, a lot. In terms of the map size, in terms of ease of use in the icons, in the font, whether the font was backlit, whether you had colorblind or whether you wanted to change some of the other graphical settings. It was a lot to chew through. And I'll get to graphics in a minute, don't worry. But there must have been like six or seven pages of options to go through before the game even started. And you could absolutely leave the entire game on default settings and you would be perfectly fine. But for people like me who have a little bit higher end sound system, who have a little bit higher end television, these settings were very, very welcome. And the fact that I was able to set up subtitles before the game started was a really big deal for me. A lot of games you have to wait until you get to the opening cinematic and it kind of takes you out of the experience. Here you're basically setting the table entirely before you sit down to eat. And boy, will you eat. And I, I want to close off the uh, game setup by saying that the character creation is one of the most robust I have ever seen. Character creation isn't really my jam. I usually just pick a default female character with pretty hair. The only thing I did in this game was I added a touch of gray because it reminds me of my wife's hair and I made my Palico look mean. And uh, that was a default as well. But some of the character creation options I have seen, um, I've seen Woody from Toy Story. I've seen Harry Potter. I've seen a lot of characters that look really, really good with this custom creator. So if you're somebody who enjoys that, you're going to have a blast. And when the character creator is over, the game seamlessly transitions into the very first cinematic and the gameplay. And the game begins right there. It's very, very well done. The transitions between loading screens and gameplay are really well done. It kind of reminds me of like probably one of the times that sticks out the most to me was The Last of Us where you'd watch a cutscene and then you'd be controlling the character, but you didn't realize it. You were just standing like in an elevator or something waiting for your character to move. And you're like, oh, I'm in control now. That's how this felt. It was that seamless. In terms of sound design, um, Monster Hunter has always had a very intense sound design. Uh, the ambient sounds of the world is what really kind of brings this whole experience together in my opinion. 
listening to the rustling of trees, the squeaking of small animals, your armor rustling and clanking and janking as you move through the world, whether mounted or on foot. All has a very distinct sound and feel to it. And if you have a higher end set of headphones, you're gonna really appreciate this because you're gonna find, you're gonna hear everything that much better. Combat is definitely violent and intense. It's the whole focus and point of this game. And when you get into combat, music will flare up very quickly and it feels impactful. During monster restaging, the music dies off, the beat kind of slows down, you just hear just a basic drum line. And as you approach an enemy, the music swells up into this massive, massive, epic moment when you start fighting the monster again. And I really like that a lot too. I thought they did a really, really good job with building up that ebb and flow of music and those peaceful moments when you're exploring the world and those not, full peace, not so peaceful moments when you're going to town on some of the harder enemies. Like on the graphics side, uh, this is definitely gonna be controversial for sure. Uh, no doubt about it. Um, the game does not look great. And, and I wish it would look a little bit better. I, I think there's time for them to hopefully refine this. You, do are, uh, you are offered a 120 hertz mode, a 60 hertz mode, and a 30 hertz mode. Um, as you know from previous reviews I've done, I am a 120 hertz guy all the way. It is smooth thanks to variable refresh rate, but it, VRR is doing heavy lifting here. Heavy lifting. If you're watching the frame rate, if your TV supports, and I'm sure Digital Foundry will do a much better review than I did, but if you're watching the frame rate, it is bouncing all over the place, 30, 40 frames a second at times, going from as high as 120 down to 70, sometimes in the 60s, and it's just snapping back and forth. If you do not have VRR on your TV, you're gonna be in for a bad time, straight up. Even if you lower it to the 60 hertz mode, it does look a little bit nicer, but it's very blurry. And it's very, you're, you're, you're very cognizant of the trade-offs that the game has between a fidelity mode and a quality mode. Other games have hid this better, whether it be through more aggressive pop-up or whether it be through more aggressive kind of aliasing in the, in the background. This game, it's very clear when you're toggling between modes, how blurry your character and the armor is, their weapons are. It doesn't look great. Obviously, in that case, you'd want to stick with 30 hertz mode, right? That is your uh, your quality mode, right? That's the nice 4K, the ray tracing, everything. But the game suffers from a significant choppiness here, and it does feel very sluggish. And as a result, it doesn't look great either. This might be a case for me to jump back into this game on PC, like I did for Monster Hunter Rise. I'll find out next weekend during that open beta period for everyone. Right now, as I mentioned, it's just for PlayStation users. I'm also curious what the PlayStation Pro can bring to the table. As you guys know, I have that on pre-order. And I want to play this on PlayStation. I want to sit upstairs with my big uh, OLED television at 120 frames a second with my big heavy-duty uh, speakers and, and with my sound bar or whether I want to listen with my headphones and I'm not feeling the warm fuzzies yet. As I said, it's a beta. I am not making excuses. I know the game can look better. I've seen what a game like Resident Evil could be with the RE engine. And I know that Capcom is up to the challenge. Why they released the game in this state, at least in a beta, it's gonna leave a lot of sour taste in people's mouth. Um, we'll have to see how that works out. But, you're not buying this game for the graphics. You are buying this game for the combat. That is the absolute reason you're here, and I'm here to tell you it is absolutely incredible. It is the most refined, polished combat of any Monster Hunter game I have ever played. I feel like I am in complete control of my character at all times. Monster Hunter is a complex game. There's a lot of weapons and items that you're going to be manipulating constantly, whether it's using... Uh, 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 you're sharpening your, your whetstone to sharpen your weapon or taking a potion or getting away from combat or setting a trap or taking a buff. All of these things work very, very well. They got rid of that kind of old system before where you almost had to confirm a choice. Here, a lot of radial menus have been introduced. It works very well. And quickly, you can manipulate to the things that matter the most to you. They've even made some things really nice like let me take the potion that will heal me the most right now. You don't have to cycle through 
high potions and mega potions and regular potions. No, you just give me the thing that gives me the most health right now and the game will do that for you. You could obviously change all these quick sets and presets to something more of your liking, but I like that the game is thinking for you. Um, additionally, they've added this kind of manual focus system that reminds me of like a third person shooter where the camera will lock behind your character and now you're looking at a crosshair and depending on where you aim the crosshair and attack, your character will inflict damage, damage on that specific point. I appreciated this. I thought the previous lock-on system in old Monster Hunter games was lacking. It was very hard for me sometimes to target a monster's tail or their foot or their neck. And a lot of times I would just swing for damage rather than really try to use my weapon in the most effective way. As an example, you use a hammer to try to concuss an enemy by hitting them in the head. You'd use a sword to try to cut off loose appendages, typically the tail on the back. Here with this lock-on system, you're going to have total control over where you attack at all times, and I like that. And because of that, you are going to inflict key damage into certain areas of the monster. As they begin to take damage, you'll see wounds appear. And depending on using this crosshair system to hit a specific part of the monster, you're going to inflict significant damage, typically breaking off crafting materials or at least stunning them, which allows you to wind up for some of your bigger attacks. It's a very nice system that offers a little risk and reward because, again, your character is locked in this kind of third-person mode, but nice because if you can do the, treat the payoff, you know, you get that great payoff if you, if you can hit that attack, which is awesome. Each weapon, as with every Monster Hunter game, feels so polished and distinct. Um, I loved, I loved some of the new transitions that the enemy, that, that that the weapons have when you're fighting enemies. One that comes to mind definitely is the sword axe, which now transitions between switching between the sword and the axe. It actually continues the combo. I feel like I have to relearn how to play this game. It was so seamless and so fluid to play with a weapon and to toggle between heavy and light attacks and combo attacks seamlessly. I know there are better combos than the ones I was putting together, but I still felt that I was effective in battle. If you want to be a button masher, you can. You're not going to do that well in this game. It takes time to learn the cadence of your weapon and to learn kind of the cadence of the battle with the enemy to make sure you're not getting hit or stunned. But when you pull off some of these more advanced attacks, you feel like an absolute badass legend. And that's exactly what I love about Monster Hunter games, that risk and reward. And the more time you put into the game, the more you're going to receive on the back end. Um, I also love they added this new thing. I'm calling it test of strength. There might be a better term for it. But you've probably seen it in the preliminary gameplay videos. It's where an enemy is charging you and you basically enter this like test of strength where they're like trying to bite you and you're holding your shield up against their mouth or you're leaning both hands against your weapon and you're leaning back, which allows you to attack an enemy and hit them in their mouth and do, you know, inc inflict some pretty significant damage, knock them back, throw them down. Um, and when you get into those engagements and you win and the enemy goes flying and you're still standing there, you do feel like a badass. Again, you're hearing me say that a lot because I felt like that a lot. There are no wire bugs this time around though, unfortunately, which I do miss. I thought that was a phenomenal feature of Monster Hunter Rise for uh, great fluidity in combat, being able to Spider-Man in and out of combat as you saw fit. However, your secret, which is now your mount, will do a lot more for you. It's significantly more involved in combat. It's very easy to summon. It's a one button press summon that it comes running in and seamlessly you're jumping on and riding away to use your whetstone, to eat food, to buff your character, to take health potions, whatever you need to do. It's easy to get in and out of combat quickly. Your secret will also come over and headbutt you if you're stunned. Your secret will also just be generally involved in combat, which I like. And the same goes for your palico. Your palico isn't gonna leave now when you bring in other friends. If you can't find other friends, don't worry. The game will give you NPC companions until other people can join your game. But your palico will always be with you, which is nice because you're gonna grow attached to your palico. You're gonna grow attached to your secret. You're gonna put armor on them. You're gonna teach them skills. You're gonna give them better weapons. You're gonna grind for them just like you're grinding for yourself. And it's nice that they are part of the experience and they level with you throughout the entire experience. It's gonna definitely be your right-hand man and you're gonna just really appreciate that that companionship. I know I do. Um, all in all, like I said, I think this game is absolutely phenomenal. The graphics need to tighten up, though. That is something that I think will hurt sales if they cannot address this prior to launch. There is still time. 
Obviously, the PlayStation Pro is around the corner, but not everybody's buying a PlayStation Pro, so they need to make a smart decision on what they do to make the game look a little more realistic and a little better. It's still a little bit too fuzzy for most people's taste. Most people's taste, the motion, the, the world blur needs to be turned off. It's a little too aggressive. The lighting can be a little bit better. I can go on and on, but the parts that matter, the character fur, your character's hair, your armor, the combat, the battle, the feel when you're executing and destroying these larger than life enemies that are multiple stage fights is incredible. I cannot wait for this game. I will be pre-ordering it. I just don't know where yet. I need to play that PC port before I get a little bit more, more warm fuzzies. See some of the technical reviews from guys a little bit smarter than me like a Digital Foundry. Get some other opinions before I make my decision, but I'm absolutely investing in this game. I am ready to be all in and bring it on. Hope you guys enjoyed this first deep dive look at Monster Hunter. Uh, leave some comments below. Let me know if you got a chance to check it out on the PlayStation or if you're waiting for it on a console specific of your choice or your thoughts on what you've seen so far. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, we will see you guys on the other side.